Wow. Hey, girl friends, I'm Bianca Renee, and you're watching Bianca Renee today. And today is going to be a little different from your regular scheduled programming. You guys are about to get two curly hair videos this week. Usually today, Fridays, I do like makeup videos, maybe skincare. But after posting my video last week and reading those comments, I decided that I probably should come back sooner than later and clarify a couple things. Now, if you didn't see my video last week, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm offended, but you really got to push that subscribe button and that little bell next to it. That way you're notified as soon as I post a new video. But I did post my challenge for 2019, which is the Big Chop Challenge. Every year, I challenge you guys to do something to better your hair. Year one was my no heat challenge. because If you ain't got no heat, you ain't got no problems. Second year was my deep conditioning challenge where I challenge you guys to deep condition your hair every single week. And now, 2019, I'm challenging you guys to get a big chop. But I realized that what I meant by that was if you have heat damage, bleach, color dye damage, like your curls literally won't come back. Like they are deceased that's who should be big chopping. I do not want you to big chop your hair if your hair is totally fine. I appreciate you just wanting to do all of my challenges. Like you are definitely a ride or die, but if you do not have anything wrong with your hair, don't cut it off because of me. But even saying that, I do know that many of you just have unhealthy hair, but maybe it's not damaged to the point of no return. So today's video, we're gonna talk about whether you should big chop or you should just transition. Big chop usually kind of comes from the extreme of literally cutting off like all your hair. This is for all my girls that grew up with relaxers. Okay, you put a relaxer in your hair, you got it pressed over and over, you just always wore it straight, like you don't even know what your curls look like anymore. Just to be super crystal clear, here are some examples of my personal friends that have done a real big chop. This is one of my friends who I've only known with straight hair. I've never seen her with curly hair. She got her hair relaxed for eight years and then got keratin treatments for three years. Like, that's a lot. That's a lot to do to your hair. Like, those curls are like, oh, you don't like us. You don't want us here. We're going to go and we're not coming back. And that's what they did. And she knew that, so she did a real big chop and had to cut off all that relaxed hair. And now she looks like this, fabulous, like she should. I also have a photo of Moise and Malia. These are also girls that I thought would like never do this. You know, like they've always had straight hair. Didn't think they'd wanna go that short, but never say never, they both committed. They did a super big chop and now they are rocking their natural hair and their curl pattern is already growing back and thriving. But if this does not pertain to you and your hair is just frizzy or dry, you just need to do my deep conditioning challenge. You might not need to cut it. You might just need a trim. Many of you have already kind of started transitioning where you have a couple inches of new growth and then the point of demarcation where it goes from your naturally curly texture to those straight damaged pieces. That could still be considered a big chop, but it could also just be a haircut depending on the length of your new growth. For example, if your hair looks like this, you see that new growth at the top where it's curly and then those definite straight damaged pieces. Those straight damaged pieces are not gonna look as good as your new growth. That's the part you have to cut off. So at that point between the new growth and the damaged hair, that's where you need to cut. I also want to talk about the whole myth and I've got a couple comments asking, well, why do we have to cut our hair for it to grow if your hair grows out of your scalp? Like, why can't I just keep letting it grow and then, you know, as it gets longer, then I cut it off. You could. That is what is more known as transitioning, where a lot of people just cut off like an inch at a time, little by little, grow an inch, cut an inch, grow an inch, cut an inch. And I know everyone that I've ever talked to about this, they always start off with that. And then at the end of their story, they end up saying, but then I got over it and I just cut it all off. And it was the best thing I could have done. I hear that 
over and over again. So it's kind of like when you go into a swimming pool. Yes, you could sit on the step, you could put in your big toe, get it to your ankles, maybe a full leg, and it's just taking so long. You're like, just get in the pool. And then you have the person that's down to just jump in. So meanwhile, you're just playing footsies with the water, and all your friends over here are already swimming, doing somersaults, they're playing Marco Polo, but you're still on the steps. So what I'm trying to say is you're really just wasting time. You're prolonging the inevitable. Just jump in the pool and start enjoying your life. That way you can get a head start in your progress. I'm already getting comments on my last video and my last post of people saying, yeah, I'm gonna do the big chop in November. Okay, when I said my 2019 challenge, I guess I should have clarified, like I want you to do that now. Not the end of 2019, I wanna see your results at the end of 2019. So if you start now in January, just imagine how much better your hair is gonna look by November. You wanna waste all these precious months just to do it at the end of the year? Like why? Now going back to the question of, well, if your hair grows out of your scalp, why does it matter if I cut off the bottom? Well, to even clarify this further, I did call one of my stylist friends, Nye the hairstylist, who is a stylist in Washington, D.C. So if you guys live in Washington, D.C., looking for a diva cut, curly cut, you should go to her. But I asked her the same question, and she explained to me that when your hair is dead, you know, your dead ends, it often splits, like we know them as split ends. So think of it like as like a nylon, right? If you get a hole in your tights, all of a sudden, it just splits, 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 and it starts to go all the way up, and then you have this big line in your tights. The same thing could happen with your hair. If your hair is split, it continue to split, and it can now harm your new growth, your healthy hair, and that's what's causing more breakage. So if you have more breakage, you're gonna now affect your length retention. So you'll be able to maintain longer hair if you cut it because that dead end is not weighing it down or splitting it or messing up your new growth. It's just overall better to let it go. Don't make me sing the Frozen song right now. Some of you have even commented that you're just not gonna do it because you need to put your hair in a ponytail and you just need that length to literally put it up. Well, I guess. If you literally just want an ugly ponytail, I don't know how I can convince you not to have an ugly ponytail if you like your ugly ponytail, like to each his own. But I much rather have short, healthy, beautiful curls than a long, ugly ponytail. Some of y'all really disagree with that and that's just crazy to me. But overall, I want you to do what's best for you. If you know you will be miserable with an inch of hair, okay, I don't, I don't want to be the reason that you're sad. But what I do want is you to build up enough confidence to know that that does not define how beautiful you are. And short hair or not, it does not change who you are as a person. And if you lose friends because your hair is short, were they really your friend in the first place? If you plan on getting your hair cut soon, please send me a DM on Instagram at Ms. Bianca Renee. I'd love to have a little, little pep talk with you. And if you could have someone go with you to film it, that would be amazing. I'd love for you to get footage horizontally, like on your phone or your camera, and then you could send it to me because I wanna see the whole process. Feel free to tell me how you feel before, during, after. I wanna see the hair actually get cut. So if you're down, send a video to today at gmail.com, and I'd love to help you along your curly hair journey. I know I said a couple things in this video that's definitely going to offend some of you watching. I hope you understand that that is not the purpose of this video. I hope you understand that I'm coming from a good place. I just want to help you get to your curly hair goals faster. And if you understand that, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And make sure to push that bell so you don't miss any more of my videos. I post new videos every Friday and Sunday. You also can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Ms. Bianca Renee. 
I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.